Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am Justice, and today's video is delivering on a promise of sorts. Uh, if you watched my Raging Cats deck profile, which uh, if you didn't, you should. So let's put a card up there for you. There you go. Go watch that. I'll wait. Hey, okay, welcome back. Um, during that video, uh, I promised to tell you all what deck I used to defeat the very thing that I had created. Uh, because after uh, I won the first uh, SDL Banlist tournament with Raging Cat, uh, that deck has suddenly seen a big spike in popularity. Um, and this was all part of my master plan to take it down in Toxic Legacy 4, which was a $100 tournament. Uh, and that's right, I did use Cyberdarks. This deck is very, very cool. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what's in that deck and how it works. All right, so this is the deck profile for the Cyberdark deck that I won Toxic Legacy 4 with. And before we get into it, I do have to give a shout out to Ninjetti Ursus, uh, one of the great members of the Speed Duel community and the creator of this deck. Uh, the side deck is going to be different, but the main deck is his list. So shout out to Ursus. Uh, it performed beautifully. So let's get into it. Of course, we are going to be using the man Zane Truesdale himself. It is the Cyber Dark style skill. Up to three times per duel, once each when your life points are 3,000 or less, 2,000 or less, or 1,000 or less, you can reveal three Cyber Dark monsters from your deck. Your opponent randomly chooses one of them, which gets added to your hand, and then you take one card from your hand and shuffle it back into your deck along with the two that weren't chosen. Now, the key part about this skill is that it does not say three Cyberdark monsters with different names. So you can search three of the same monster and guess what's going to get added to your hand. And that is often the play is to guarantee to get the Cyberdark that you want. So the skill is very, very good for the deck's consistency. It's the whole thing behind it. So let's take a look at the monster lineup. Of course, we are going to be running three each of the Cyberdark monsters. That is Edge, Horn, and Keel. Uh, so now, there is a lot of text on these cards, but know that most of the text is actually shared among all three, which is that when they are normal summoned, you can take a level three or lower dragon in your graveyard, equip it to them, they gain attack equal to that dragon's attack. Uh, and if they would be destroyed by battle, by battle only, not card effect, unfortunately, uh, you destroy the equipped card instead. Their unique effects are that Edge can attack directly, but if it does, it inflicts half battle damage uh, if it's attacking by its own effect. Same as uh, Crystal Beast Amethyst Cat. Uh, Cyberdark Horn does piercing battle damage, and Cyberdark Keel deals 300 points damage to your opponent if it destroys a monster in battle. I know, huge burn damage, right? Um, so we're asking, so what is the level 3 or lower dragon that they are going to be equipping? Uh, they are going to be equipping the Cyber Dark Claw. And this is what makes the deck really come together, because Cyber Dark Claw can actually pitch itself to the graveyard to search a Cyber Dark spell or trap from the deck. So you immediately can pitch Claw right on turn 1 to search the spell, gets it in the graveyard to set up any of your Cyber Dark monsters. So those are the Cyberdarks. Um, actually, before I put those away, I should mention the very important part about Claw, other than the fact that it gets itself to the graveyard to search a spell or trap, uh, is also that during damage calculation, when your monster battles, whether you attack or it is attacked, uh, whilst Claw is equipped to it, you can send a monster from your extra deck to the graveyard, which is very important. We'll get to why. Um, and also, if this is sent to the graveyard while it was equipped to a monster, uh, you can add a Cyber Dark monster from your graveyard back to your hand. This works really mainly if it's uh, if the monster would be destroyed in battle, this is destroyed instead. That's how it's going to go. Um, most other ways are not going to work. Uh, so just keep in mind that it has to be sent to the graveyard while the monster is still a monster on the field. Yu-Gi-Oh! technicalities, just be aware of that. Uh, but yeah, Claw actually has a lot of uses, and it's really what makes the deck go. The only other monsters we're running, uh, since we are running a deck that relies on its monsters, uh, we are running three copies of Sphere Karibo, 
Uh, this is to protect our monsters from anything that may be threatening them, such as, say, a DD Warrior Lady, uh, or anything that is big enough to run them over. Uh, Sphere Karibo actually is very, very clutch in this deck. Uh, the only Cyberdark spell or trap that we have in Speed Duels is Cyberdark Impact. Uh, that is what you will be searching with Claw. It is also often what you're going to be returning to the deck with uh, Cyberdark Style when it makes you return a card from your hand to your deck. This is often going to be what you're putting back, not always, but a lot of times, since you can always just search it again with a second Claw. Uh, this makes you summon one each of Cyberdark Edge, Horn, and Keel uh, from your hand field or graveyard into the deck to special summon Cyber Dark Dragon. Uh, and we'll go over the extra deck after the main deck and we'll go over Cyber Dark Dragon and why this is important. Um, alrighty. So for the rest of these spells, we are running three copies of Cosmic Cyclone. This actually is an incredible spell for the deck. This is our limited three card. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone serves two purposes. One, it's backer removal, which is very important for a deck that relies on being able to normal summon and then attack. Uh, so backer removal is important. But the thousand life point cost also immediately is, makes you able to trigger your Cyber Dark style skill. So let's say you go second, your opponent sets a back row, you Cosmic it, you cleared the back row, you also got yourself down to 3000 life, you can immediately activate Cyber Dark style. If you don't already have a claw, reveal three claws from the deck. One will randomly get added back to your hand, um, and then you can go off from there. So Cosmic Cyclone is amazing for setting up everything this deck wants to do. And because backer removal is so important, that's right, we are actually running three copies of Night Beam. Um, you want to be able to go aggressive with this deck when possible, so that's why it's Night Beam instead of something like, say, Dust Tornado. If you want to play Dust, you certainly can. Uh, if you prefer that as being slightly more versatile, uh, but Night Beam is very, very good at just sniping out uh, back rows. And if they only have one, or if they can't chain to something, then it's a guaranteed removal. So very, very nice for that. All right, that will do it for the spells. On to the traps. Again, we are all about protecting our monsters. If you watch my Raging Cat deck profile video, where again, it was a deck that was summoning monsters and needed to protect them, a lot of these cards will not come as a surprise to you. Uh, again, we are running three copies of Floodgate Trap Hole. This card, again, is probably a staple of the bandless format. It goes in many, many different decks, uh, but especially one where you really need to protect your monsters, as we do. I don't think we need to talk about how good Floodgate is. Um, again, it is two copies of Nightmare Wheel. Uh, even less so than Raging Cat, I would say, is the burn damage really something you're counting on. It can come up. You can just win games with the burn damage of Nightmare Wheel. Of course you can. Uh, it is not your main game plan. It is to lock your opponent's monster in place that it cannot threaten yours. And yeah, the extra damage, definitely nice. Nightmare Wheel is dumb in speed duels. We all know this. But it's still legal at two. Even in the Madness format, we play it because it's very good for the deck. Um, and then after that is going to be three copies of Wall of Disruption. Um... This card, again, is very, very good for when your opponent is trying to take care of your monsters by attacking them. Given all of the Book of Moon and Floodgate and Sphere Creep that we have, it's very easy for our opponent to have multiple monsters in play. Wall of Disruption can just absolutely stuff anything they're trying to do, just stop them in their tracks, make them take a bunch of damage from attacking into your 2400 attack monster while also losing their monster in battle. A very, very good card. We can afford to run it at three in this deck uh, because if you've been paying attention, you'll notice this is actually a 30 card deck. Now, I am not normally one to advocate for 30 cards in speed duels. Um, I generally feel that 20 cards is best, maybe 21 or 22 in certain circumstances, maybe a 25, 26 list if you're playing something a little bit slower. Um, if you're playing pure stall, however, um, please seek help. There's something wrong and you need to figure out what happened in your life. But uh, other than that, uh, the reason why we can play 30 cards in this deck, and the reason why I believe Ursa's made the right decision in making this deck 30 cards now that I've played a fair amount with it, there's a lot that you want this deck to be able to do. You need to consistently get monsters into play, your Cyberdarks, but you also consistently need back row for them. Something like Raging Cat, again, going back to my other deck profile video, can very easily afford to be 20 cards. 
uh, because it's just two monsters. That's it. It's three copies of Raging Plains Pride, three copies of Amethyst Cat. That's it. This deck, you need each of the three Cyber Dark uh, machine monsters plus the Cyber Dark Claw. So even if you try to cut down the number of Cyber Darks, it becomes very, very awkward for deck building. The 30 card version actually gives you the right ratios, the right uh, amount of cards to have options at your disposal always. This deck is actually pretty resilient. It's much more consistent than a traditional 30 card deck, specifically because of the Cyber Dark style skill, allowing you to search out your Cyber Darks basically at will. Um, and that really, really helps a lot. It makes a big difference compared to 30 card almost anything else. Um, Cyberdark style makes this deck much more consistent than you might think even at 30 cards. Um, and I really do believe that is the correct way to play this deck specifically. Uh, let's talk about the extra deck. I only brought two cards over here. You can put six in your extra deck, of course. But I brought two over because there's two main ones that you need to have in your extra deck. Uh, the first, as we mentioned earlier, is the Cyberdark Dragon. Uh, when it is summoned, uh, you can equip a dragon from your graveyard to it. Now, there is something important to note here. And of course, it gains attack equal to the dragon's attack. Whereas the smaller Cyberdarks set a level 3 or lower dragon, Cyberdark Dragon does not say that. Cyberdark Dragon is going to equip any dragon you want in your graveyard. Do so you remember how we talked earlier about Cyberdark Claw's effect, that when, it, when it's equipped to a monster and that monster battles, you can send a monster from your extra deck to the graveyard? Yeah, you're going to be one sending uh, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. That is the dragon you want to be sending to the graveyard. Now, I will say it's easy to forget about this effect of Claw while you're playing. Do not forget. Make sure to send your Blue Eyes to the graveyard. Uh, I actually did forget a couple times while I was playing, and just because you're really thinking about your moves, trying to strategize, and then in the moment it's very easy to forget. There was actually one of my matches that I still won, because I won all the matches that I played during this tournament, uh, but I actually could have won a turn earlier, if I hadn't forgotten Claw's effect to send Blue Eyes, and because I forgot, it actually made uh, me allow my opponent to take an extra turn. Fortunately, it didn't change the outcome of the duel, but sometimes one turn is all they need, so don't forget. Um, but this is the combo here, and you're not summoning Cyber Dark Dragon every game. This is not your main game plan, but it can absolutely be a blowout finisher when you can just suddenly summon a 5,500 attack monster onto the field. Uh, so really, really cool. So... That's that. Let's talk about the extra deck. Um, I will start with what is the same for my extra deck to the one that Ursus had, and that is three copies of Wabaku. Now, unlike uh, Raging Cat, this card is not as important to be in the main deck. Uh, this is a side deck specifically against extremely aggressive decks such as Cyber Angels, or another deck that's really starting to make its presence felt in this limited list format, uh, which is Ojama Armed Dragon. Uh, both of those are just looking to OTK you. Sometimes just stopping that OTK turn is all you need to be able to then turn things around and win the game. So, whereas if you don't have these, it's very possible that they can beat you if they have enough backer removal. Having the Wabakus just guarantees that you are not going to lose that turn, and a lot of times that's often all you need. So, those are the Wabakus. Uh, the rest of the side deck, there's three other cards. These are very much designed for matchups that are either Burn or Crystal Beasts. Uh, because Crystal Beasts, again, can be very annoying to deal with. I actually had to play against it twice uh, during the Toxic Legacy tournament. Once during Swiss, and then again uh, in Finals, I believe. I'm trying to remember now if it was my top four match or my Finals. It was one or the other. No, I believe it. No, it was Finals. It was Finals. Um, so I had to play against them twice. Uh, it's a tough matchup. But what can really help is this is where you might be wondering why is there no zoma in the deck uh because this is where our limit one slot went we are going to play the one copy of jinzo in the side this card actually just basically completely shuts down crystal beasts uh particularly the looking into the future version which is what's most popular right now in banlist seems to be the strongest version of crystal beasts um they don't play any spells and they play anywhere between very few to zero outs to jinzo uh, a lot of times, just putting Jinzo on the field can actually just straight up win the game against Crystal Beasts. And against any other back row heavy deck, I will say that while Raging Cat runs Book of Moon, if you don't have it right away for the Jinzo, Jinzo can absolutely wreck Raging Cat's day. Um, so Jinzo, very, very good for multiple things. Alongside Jinzo, uh, we also have two copies of Straight Flush. Speaking of cards that can absolutely blow out Crystal Beasts, 
Crystal Beast basically cannot play around Straight Flush. Some other decks can. Raging Cat can. Other back row heavy decks can. This is obviously a back row heavy deck. It can play around it if you know your opponent's on it, although not as easily, I will say that. Um, often for the same reason Crystal Beast really can't. Crystal Beast need to put a Crystal Beast in their spell and trap zone. Same way that Cyber Dark needs uh, your monster to be equipped with uh, Cyber Dark Claw. So you're basically only giving yourself two spell and trap zones to deal with. One of the ways, actually, that I was able to beat my uh, opponent in finals, who was uh, playing Crystal Beasts, was that they had already seen Straight Flush from our previous match, so they started playing around it. Well, playing around Straight Flush means they only have one spell and trap zone, essentially. They can only play one trap per turn. Crystal Beasts are a lot less scary when there's only one back row per turn, especially in a deck that's meaning three Cosmic Cyclones and three Night Beams. Um, so this makes your opponent have to play differently. They either can't play around it, or if they do, they're just hurting themselves by not setting as much back row as they want to. I will say there were some games, depending on the matchup, where I might have only sided in one trade flush rather than both. It is matchup dependent. Against Crystal Beast, you probably take both. Against other back row heavy decks, you might only take one. Or you might even side it in game two, and then if you go to game three, you might even side it back out, because at that point, they're probably playing around it, and then you can have other options available to you. Uh, but these cards are really anti-Crystal Beasts and other back row heavy decks which are probably the toughest matchups for Cyberdarks. Uh, so that will do it for the deck profile. Uh, the deck is a lot of fun. I definitely encourage you to try it out. It was more fun than I expected. It was more consistent than I expected. Um, I've actually played it in a, in a couple events now. Uh, one more casual and then here during Toxic Legacy. Did a lot of testing with it. The deck is really, really cool. Uh, more consistent than you think, thanks to the skill. Um, and yeah, just super, super fun. So I do think this is actually one of the best decks in this format. Uh, so if you are trying to win, this is definitely one of the ones you should be looking at. Uh, so that will do it for this. Um, of course, if you have any questions, anything that I didn't cover during this deck profile you'd like to know about, definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know, and I will be happy to answer uh, any questions that you have. So uh, let's wrap this one up. Uh, as always, my friends... Uh, until next time, be good to yourselves, be good to each other, good luck in all of your games, and we will see you soon.